It is 2019 and we still hear such news as Facebook accidentally realizing they had been storing plain text passwords for millions of users, Google closing its social network platform last month after data leaks among other concerns, and last year, records of the Indian National Identity Database being exposed. Every year, hackers manage to breach, breach through security defenses and access valuable information of millions of people. A study from IBM estimated that the cost of data breaches was around two billion US dollars among 500 companies worldwide just in the last year. Taint tracking is a solution that detects and defends against information leaks by monitoring dynamic executions. So it taints sensitive user data, tracks taints throughout execution, and then prevents taints from flowing into untrusted channels. Taint tracking has three components, sources, propagation, and syncs. Sources identify where sensitive data enter the program state and mark them with taints. So for example, program arguments, inputs from keyboard, or data from the file system or the network can be typically taint sources. The propagation policy defines how to compute taints for values that are derived from sensitive data. So typically, uh, taints, uh, taints propagate explicitly via operations that are data dependent on tainted data. So for example, x equals secret plus y, here x will be tainted by secret and y. But taints can also propagate implicitly, for example, via control flow dependence. So here we see operations that are control dependent on the tainted secret. And with implicit propagation, this taint also flows to the result of all operations inside the condition. Well, implicit propagations are rarely used in practice because they lead to over-tainting, and so we only focus on explicit flows. And finally, sinks are program locations where we check the taint state. So for example, data being sent over the network should not contain certain types of taints. By adapting the source, sync, and propagation policies, taint tracking has been useful in several domains. For example, preventing buffer overflow, command injection, or cross-site scripting attacks, detecting information leaks, and also in software engineering for testing, debugging, and other program analysis. But despite its useful applications, live taint tracking on production systems has been challenging due to its performance overheads. So a naive dynamic monitoring approach would have to instrument each instruction to look up the taint of its operands, compute the taint propagation, and then modify the taint state. So in our example here, for the first instruction x equals c plus 3, we monitor taint of x equals taint of c, and constants are never really tainted. Next, secret is a taint source in our example. And for the assignment y equals secret, we explicitly transfer the taint of secret to taint of y. Next, inside the if block where we compute z as c multiplied by y, we monitor taint of z equals taint of c or taint of y, meaning z can be tainted by both c and y. And again, for the assignment, we explicitly transfer the taints. So these are all our taint tracking monitors. Additionally, since the tainted value out can reach the sync, that is the print statement, the analysis has to check the taint of out before performing this operation. So all this additional work amounts to huge slowdowns, primarily due to the metadata tracking operations. Now, most programs are mostly correct, and a majority of instructions would not propagate taints in their correct dynamic executions. So many of these taint monitors are actually unnecessary, and a static analysis can elide some of the unnecessary monitors. So for example, here it can reason that the first instruction would never propagate taint because, because both its operand C and the constant value are never going to be tainted. So if static analysis can prove that an instruction never propagates taints using data flow analysis, we can elide tracking taints for such operate, operations. This static analysis is sound, but as I will show you next, it is imprecise, unscalable, and ineffective in reducing the overall dynamic overheads. Now, in order to be sound, static analysis needs to consider all possible program states. But computing this exact set of possible behaviors is undecidable, so it conservatively considers an over-approximation of the possible states, including many infeasible states. As a result, the analysis becomes very imprecise and unscalable. This is a fundamental limitation of traditional sound static analysis. Optimistic hybrid analysis is a new technique that attempts to mitigate this imprecision problem. So it, uh, it observes a few tested program states and then predicates the static analysis by using invariants learned on those states. These invariants are properties that are otherwise very hard to prove statically, but almost always hold dynamically. And by assuming them, the static analysis significantly reduces its state space, thereby making it precise and scalable. 
but careful design is still needed for soundness when a case when a state outside the predicated analysis is encountered so looking back at our example if the variable p always takes non negative values in all useful executions the static analysis can assume this invariant to induce more aggressive optimizations so assuming the if plug never executes it can reason that y stent would never flow forward to z and then out and so on so it can elide those taint monitors further using backward reachability it can reason that y stent would never reach the sink that is the print statement and elide tracking that as well so this simple assumption allows us to elide all the taint monitors in our example so this predicated analysis is much more precise targeted to the common case behavior and scalable optimistic hybrid analysis works as follows it profiles the target program to gather invariants that hold in most dynamic runs the static analysis then assumes these invariants predicating its state space thereby improving precision and eliding many more dynamic monitors and the optimized dynamic analysis then executes so the property that we assumed in our example translates to the highlighted code block not being executed this is in fact our simplest type of likely invariant unreachable code we use two other types of invariants that deal with function pointer callies and function call contexts as long as these invariants do not fail in an execution the analysis outcome is the same as the conservative sound approach but what happens if an invariant fails so in our example we started with the tainted secret shown here in the taint set and after we execute y equals secret originally we would have tainted y as well but using the optimistic assumptions we elided tracking y if the invariant ever failed and we execute z equals c times y now we have no idea if y is tainted as a result we lose tracking this taint flow and y can now propagate to z and out and leak without being detected so when the invariant failed the problem is that eliding y taint monitor resulted in losing y tainted state and that would require us to roll back to recover this lost analysis metadata state so the dynamic analysis needs to be able to detect when an invariant violates and then recover the analysis in order to be sound so we need to add dynamic invariant validation checks for the detection and a recovery mechanism that can correct the effect of the incorrectly elided monitors and then resume with the correctly optimized analysis so the question is how do we recover the analysis well because you could have lost essential metadata state anywhere in your program prior work conservatively rolls back and reexecutes from the beginning well this approach works for offline post mortem kind of analysis we cannot tolerate rollbacks on live production systems bounding the rollback window is hard for whole program analysis because an invariant failure anywhere could have affected in missing metadata state as early as at the beginning of the program so you have unbounded rollbacks and you end up going back to the beginning but even if you could bound the rollback window supporting rollbacks incurs additional checkpointing and logging overhead even during normal execution other than the actual rollback replay costs so to recap pure dynamic uh, monitoring is obviously very expensive conservative hybrid analysis is imprecise and therefore inefficient optimistic hybrid analysis improves precision by assuming likely program invariants but rollback in case an invariant violates remains challenging for live production systems so we need to eliminate rollbacks in order to apply oha to live systems so the rollback issue was essentially due to potentially missing metadata state instead if we make sure that we never miss any metadata that is somehow we correctly maintain the exact metadata state as in a conservative sound analysis upon an invariant violation the recovery mechanism can simply switch to the conservative analysis and continue forward if the predicated analysis can prove that a monitor does not update the analysis metadata state it essentially becomes a no op so for example if we have a taint monitor of this type taint of y equals taint of public where the value public is never really tainted this taint monitor would not modify the taint state if we were to elide this monitor even if we encounter a subsequent invariant violation that would not affect the elision of this no op monitor because the taint state is unaffected we would not need a rollback to correct the effect of this elision so by restricting the predicated static analysis to only perform safe elision of no op monitors guarantees that the analysis metadata state is exactly the same as in a conservative sound analysis and that in turn guarantees that the outcome of all analysis checks are correct this is our key insight 
So looking back at our example, remember we had assumed the invariant that the if block never executes. So if z is not tainted, the taint monitor for out will not add taint to out, and we still only have secret and y in the taint set. If we were to elide this taint monitor, we would end up with exactly the same taint set. And that is the reason this elision is safe under the assumed invariant. And if the invariant ever failed, we would have detected so and switched to the conservative analysis without missing any metadata. So elisions induced using predicated forward analysis are safe and they keep the correct metadata state. Now we could have also elided the taint monitor for Y because we reasoned it did not reach the sink. But while having this taint monitor adds secret and Y to the taint set, if we were to elide this taint monitor, the metadata state would diverge and we would lose the taint of Y. If there was an invariant failure at this point, the analysis would have to roll back to recover this lost analysis state. So this elision is unsafe and we have to keep this taint monitor. So the forward recovery mechanism essentially needs to reactivate the monitors that were optimistically elided. This works as follows. We have two versions of the program instrumented in separate control flow domains, the fast path with the optimistic analysis and the slow path with the conservative analysis. Execution begins in the fast path domain and upon an invariant violation simply switches to the conservative slow path domain and continues forward. This switching is safe because the two versions only differ in their analysis logic and moreover, safe elisions guarantee the correct metadata state at the point of invariant failure. Additionally, when returning from a function call, if there was an invariant violation in the callee, the caller should also switch to the conservative slow path. So we implement iodine using the LLVM compiler infrastructure for C programs. It implements two variants of hybrid taint tracking. The conservative analysis uses pointer and data flow analysis to identify instructions that propagate taints and only instrument them using a state-of-the-art pure dynamic tracking framework, LLVM data flow sanitizer. And the rollback free optimistic variant performs profiling followed by predicated pointer analysis. And the taint analysis uses predicated forward reachability combined with conservative backward co-reachability. The resulting dynamic analysis is more optimized and we also add the invariant checks and the recovery mechanism. We evaluate for two different uh, information flow security policies for email integrity on the postfix mail server. So for example, that the email body is sanitized and encrypted and against overwrite attacks on the Nginx web server. So for example, that derivatives of user provided values are not used as return addresses, function pointers or format strings. We observe orders of magnitude speed up over pure dynamic monitoring and an average of 4.4 times speed up over conservative tracking. Now this improvement really comes from the precision of the predicated static analysis. And we look at a few more ex uh, programs using generic policy. This graph here shows the fraction of instructions that are instrumented by the stat conservative static analysis. And after assuming the likely invariants, iodine elides instrumenting almost half of the monitors. Finally, a key question is how much profiling is needed in order to see the optimistic benefits. And we observe that profiling on existing software test suits is adequate for reducing the dynamic analysis overheads. So these graphs show how the dynamic analysis time varies with more time spent in profiling. And we observe that the dynamic overheads reduce generally with more profiling. And the reason is that the numbers on the graph indicating the total number of invariant violations encountered reduces significantly with more profiling. Now our profiling methodology is split in two phases. First, in the left unshaded part of the graph, we run on existing regression test suits to learn invariants. This alone turns out to be uh, yielding most of the performance benefits. That is so because testing ideally attempts to exercise most realistic program behaviors. And then we also further run on a few more profile inputs representing beta tests to see the full benefits of our optimistic analysis. So to conclude, iodine enables practical low overhead taint tracking using optimistic hybrid analysis which can make such expensive dynamic analysis much faster by assuming likely program invariants. But this leads to a major problem that is unbounded rollbacks in case the invariants fail. This is critical for running on live executions. We fix this by restricting to only safe elisions, thereby enabling fast taint tracking with correct semantics without requiring rollbacks. We also show that profiling on existing test suits is adequate for most of the performance benefits. Thank you for listening, and I will answer your questions now.
very nice talk, and we have plenty of time for questions. So please, if you, if you have questions, please come to the microphone. Herbert Boss, FUSEC, Amsterdam. Um, nice talk. I have a few questions and comments, perhaps. So first of all, I, I'm, I'm always a little concerned when the case for taint analysis is made from the viewpoint of data leakage by attackers. I think this is really problematic, right? Because as you mentioned, you don't take into account implicit flows. And if you have an attacker, it's actually really easy to create implicit flows or you know, pointer, pointer tracking or what have you. So I'm, I'm a little concerned there, always. And the other thing is perhaps a comment uh, or a question. Did you compare it to some of the, uh, the faster taint analysis approaches? So you compare it to one that has an overhead of, I think, between five or eight acts or so. But even on binary ones, there are faster ones, right? Did you actually look at those? OK, so to respond to your first question about implicit uh, propagation, uh, our technique is broadly applicable to implicit propagations as well, but we do not explore them because uh, it turns out that if you have a large fraction of your program state tainted, the benefits of optimistic analysis and even a conservative static analysis reduces. Uh, that is true with uh, even conservative sound static analysis. Also, and, you know, it would explode anyway, right? So it's yes, impractical. It would, yes, it would be impractical, and that is the reason we do not look at implicit propagations. Uh, regarding your question, so there are broadly two ways that you can reduce the uh, overhead of dynamic taint tracking. The first is by reducing the number of actual monitors that you execute. And the second uh, completely orthogonal direction would be to reduce the that overhead of each individual monitor. So our focus is on the first problem. If we could prove that an, a monitor is unnecessary, we would remove that. But it turns out that proving that statically is hard. So we make assumptions that let, lead us prove this property for most of the instructions. And we also handle those cases where those assumptions go wrong. We take care of the recovery mechanisms. So uh, existing techniques that improve the overhead of each individual monitors would be orthogonal to our work. And we could combine those techniques to further improve the overhead of pain tracking. But, but I think that would have been a good baseline. To yes, uh, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Stefan Buntaler, uh, Munich. Um, I have a question. And um, the question is actually quite technical. So I'm, if, if it's uh, very uh, time consuming to answer, we should take it offline afterwards. But the question is basically, um, the safe relations should require all the analysis that you already need to basically add the code that you would elide into the paths that you're excluding. So in your example, you, for instance, you um, elide the check that you could easily move into the if statement. And so that seems to me would be the easiest thing to avoid going back to another uh, safe analyzed version. And so either my idea is so stupid that you already thought about it and it doesn't work, uh, in case I would be interested in your answer, or uh, there may be an interesting optimization opportunity there. So I think for the simple example that I had on my slides, uh, as you pointed out, you could have easily merged the taint monitor for the following instructions inside the if block. And if that is the case, uh, we are assuming the invariant that the if block is never executed, so it, uh, it is meaningless to uh, elide that taint monitor. But in general, with a whole program analysis, you would not be able to bound the effect of an invariant assumption. So if you make an assumption, it could enable you to induce optimizations much earlier in your program uh, flow. So you could have optimizations induced using uh, invariant that take effect much earlier in your program. So in that case, the ability to merge the program uh, the ability to merge monitors would no longer be true. Uh, I think it's a different question, but it was okay. probably good to take it offline. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's thank the speaker one more time.